Hey everyone, in this video we'll be solving some MCQ questions from the chapter of electrostatics from the book Pathfinder. Starting with problem number four. So in this problem, so we have four cases in which electric field vectors are shown to us and they're asking us which of these fields are created by a single point charge. So starting with option number A, as we all know, the electric field distribution to a point charge plus Q is going to be, is going to be radially outward and its magnitude is given by the formula kq by r squared right so so as the radial distance from the charge increases the electric field's magnitude will decrease so if i extrapolate these two lines and see where they meet so this will be the this will be where the charge should be placed right and it's also a positive charge since the electric fields is really outward now the distance of point b from the charge q is less than distance of point a from the charge q which means the electric field, electric field at A must be less than electric field at B. A is clearly a possible case because the length of A vector is smaller than the length of B vector, right? Now, if you check for B option, it is exactly the same condition as A, but it's the opposite, which is not true, right? Because we know the magnitude of electric field at A is going to be smaller. In option number C, this is the point of intersection and this is where the observing the electric field pattern, we can say this charge this will be because of some minus q charge right because the electric field direction is radially inward now if you see carefully here the distance of b from the charge is less than the distance of a which means the electric field at b is going to be greater than the electric field at a which is exactly what we've been given so which means option c is also correct answer for this question will be option a and option c so in this question so we we have two equal point charges a and b that are fixed on the y axis, which is equidistant from the origin. So they are asking, what can you say for the net electrostatic force on a small electrically neutral rod placed on the x axis as shown in the figure? So there's a small electrically neutral, right? So it's, it doesn't have any charge and it's placed along the x axis. And we have to talk about what will be the force on this charge. In this problem, they have not given us the information as if this rod is close to the origin or is it very far away? We have no idea about that because the answer will vary depending upon that. So let's say if the rod was somewhere uh, somewhere close to the origin. Now because of charge induction, negative charges will induce at this uh, extreme end and positive charges will get induced at the other extreme end. Now the net charge will definitely be zero, but because of this induction, there will be a net attractive force uh, towards the origin and the rod will henceforth move towards the left. But if it's if this rod was let's say extremely far away then there won't be any induction and then there won't be any force so we as we don't have the information regarding that the answer to this problem will be the option okay so moving on to problem number six so in this question a positively charged small disc is released on the top of a fixed hemispherical frictionless dome we have a constant electric field towards the right of magnitude e uh, and it's given that if the disc leaves a dome after an angular displacement of theta so it loses contact at this point, then we have to find the ratio of gravitational and electrostatic forces on the disc. Okay, so let's draw a diagram. So initially the disc was up top, so it reaches an angle theta now. So at this angle theta, it must have gained some velocity V that is tangential to the path. So now if we draw the forces on it, so there will be a force of gravity, electrostatic force, that will be Q times E, uh, which is acting towards the right and then no then there will be a normal force but but as it is leaving contact at this point we can say the normal force would be zero so now we can write the net inward force as mg cos theta minus qe sine theta this would be equal to the centripetal force which would be mv squared divided by r so this would be our equation number one now as we have to eliminate v we can use energy conservation so this distance is going to be r sine theta and this distance is going to be r cos theta so the work done by gravity would be mg times mg times okay so it descended by a distance of r minus r cos theta so that would be the work done and the work done by the electric force will be the force qe multiplied by the horizontal displacement which would be r sine theta and this would be equal to the change in kinetic energy so that would be half m v squared now the value of sine theta is given to us to be 3 by 5 now substituting all the values into this and eliminating v so we had to find the ratio of the gravitational force to the electrostatic force so that would be mg divided by qe which would be 9 by 
So our option, so our answer would be option number C. Now moving on to problem number seven. So in this question, so a point charge Q is kept at the origin and we have a dipole that is placed at a distance of Y from the X axis and the dipole's direction is along the X axis. At this point whose coordinate is uh, X comma X plus Y, it's given that the electric field due to this dipole plus the charge is zero. So if I join these two lines from the center of the dipole to the point, and let's say this angle is theta, there will be two components of electric fields due to the dipole and one component will be along the radial direction. Let's call that ER and one component will be perpendicular to it and that let's call it E theta. So now if I join the charge to the point, the electric field will be along this and the electric field will be in this direction, right? Which means this charge is actually negative. Now these three vectors must add up to a zero resultant, right? So let's say this E theta and ER has a resultant of E and this E must be opposite to the electric field due to this point charge. So let's try to get the angles now. So this angle is going to be, so let's say this angle is alpha. So this angle will be alpha as well. And this angle is going to be theta which means this angle over here will be alpha minus theta. Now we need the resultant to be along this direction, right? So the resultant of these two electric fields must make an angle of alpha minus theta with the ER direction. So we can say tan of alpha minus theta should be E theta divided by ER. How do we find out ER? So ER, the way you can find it is that so break down this dipole of dipole moment P into two components, one component along the radial direction and one component perpendicular to it. So the component of the dipole that will be the component of the dipole that will be parallel to the radial direction will be P cos theta, right? So the electric field ER, we can write it as 2K P cos theta divided by, now what is the distance of the center of the dipole from this point? This point is zero comma Y and this point here is X comma x plus y. So if you use distance formula, the distance between these two points is going to be root 2x. So this will be root 2x, the whole cube. So this will be the electric field due to the radial component. Due to the other component, it will be this point relative to this dipole is at its equatorial plane. So the electric field due to that component will be kp sin theta divided by r cubed. So now just substituting all the values in it, we'll get the value of now ta tan of a minus b is going to be tan a minus tan b upon 1 plus tan a tan b, right? And the value of tan alpha from this triangle, we can easily find it out. From this triangle will be x plus y divided by x minus tan theta. Tan theta is going to be 1 upon 1 plus tan a tan b. And this would be equal to e theta divided by er. Now again, tan theta is going to be 1. So now solving for it, I'll get y by x. So from here, you'll get the value of y to be 2x. So that was it for this problem guys. So if you had any doubts in these problems, you can comment down below. Yeah, thanks for watching.